So apparently I really upset some people with my vlog last week. Hi guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 161 and today I want to respond to some comments that were left on my vlog from last week where I was talking about hearingloss.com and the joint venture that I am doing with Audigy. Now before I get into it, if you could do me a huge favor, click the like button, you know it helps out my channel and hit that subscribe button with notification bell if you want to be notified every single time I publish a new video. With that out of the way, it's greatly appreciated. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about last week's vlog. Now if you missed it, you really should go back and watch it, maybe before you even watch this vlog, but if you wanna watch this vlog first to get some of the drama behind the scenes and then go back and watch it, be my guest, it's totally up to you. But there were definitely some people who were upset by this joint venture that I announced. And, you know, honestly, unless you're really a part of it and you understand the ins and outs of it, I could understand how some people would be upset. Some people would be like really excited about it. So it just depends on what side of the fence that you're on and what lens you're viewing it through. With that, said, I do want to go into some of the comments. There are four specific comments slash questions from last week's vlog that I found inside of the comment section that I felt would I could do more justice if I actually just kind of explain them right here to you guys. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Let's go ahead and jump into the first one. This one comes from Gary M1226. Hi again, Dr. Cliff. Overall, it sounds like an overwhelming and grand undertaking at the same time. You stated reasons for going after it are consistent with everything you have been doing. Your reputation for wanting to do the right thing for patients is solid. However, I can see where some of your subs might see this effort as a means of generating additional revenue as your network of vetted audiologists expands. I think that you might need to take some time to ensure that folks understand your motivation. Maybe explaining what you're not trying to do would keep some of the doubters on board. Anyway, the best of luck and success with your effort. So this one was a relatively positive comment. Not relatively, this was a positive comment. And, and I do appreciate, Gary, the... Um, your insight into it and maybe what I do need to kind of explain from last week's vlog. Now, if you did not see last week's vlog, again, probably a good idea to check it out, but generally speaking, it was a joint venture that was created between myself and Audigy Group, like I mentioned a few moments ago. The reason that certain people may be upset about that is because they felt like I'm just trying to do projects that is going to make me more money. Now, will I make more money with this project? I probably will make more money from this project. However, um, it's about how I allocate my time. Now, I make plenty of money with my other projects, but I literally spend all of my time creating content. In fact, I have family in town right now, and they're at Top Golf while I'm here recording video content for you guys. So I definitely give up a lot of my free time in order to make these videos and create this content. So what am I not trying to do? I'm not trying to just make more money with this joint venture. What I'm really trying to do is increase the quality of care inside of our profession, even if it's only a little bit, because I think that Audigy has a lot of members doing the right thing already, but it's to help individuals who have hearing loss find a hearing care professional who is following best practices. Now, I don't, there's probably nothing that I'll ever be able to say to help people understand that I'm not just doing this for the money. There are, I mean, you wouldn't believe the amount of money that, that gets offered to me to promote crappy products and stuff like that. I mean, I could make probably hundreds of thousands of more dollars every single year based on the stuff that I get pitched. And I don't choose to do it because I feel like that would tarnish my brand. And if my brand is devalued in terms of perception, in terms of honesty and trust, then I can't make a living off of it anyway. Um, and as an influencer, at least for half of my career, the other half is me being a clinician inside of my clinic, if I lose my influence as an influencer, it's kind of pointless and then I should just stop making content anyway. And I happen to like doing this content. So, you know, like I said, I don't think that if someone thinks that I'm just doing this to make money, I there's probably nothing that I could say to the contrary that anyone would believe me anyway, but um, I do appreciate this particular comments because it did make me kind of view things in a different light and maybe I need to start communicating in a different way. I just got to figure out what that way is. Okay, so that was my first comment slash question. Let's go ahead and get into the second one now. 
This one is from Andrea Plotkowski868. I like your new glasses. Not sure how I feel about you associating with Audigy. Well, thank you, Andrea. I do like my new glasses as well. They do help me see, which is the most important thing about them. And about this relationship with Audigy, so why did I actually decide to do a joint venture with Audigy? So my history with Audigy does go back a number of years. I have never personally been a Audigy member. Now, Audigy Group, uh, Audigy themselves, they have about, what, 600 points of sale, meaning about 600 clinics that they help to manage, that they provide management services for. And when I was going through my audiology graduate program at University of Illinois, I had a chance to go to one of their conferences. I wanna say this was around 2014, so almost like, nine years ago at this point. And I got my initial introduction to what they were all about. And I really just, <laughs> that was a great conference. I feel like they had a lot of really helpful courses to help clinicians provide better care and to be able to communicate better with their patients. And, and I really appreciated that. Now, that was not the most influential part of Audigy with me. The most influential part was when I was a fourth year extern out here in Phoenix, I had the opportunity to go to their Audigy Provider Bootcamp. And this was the first time that I saw in action person-centered care. So if you don't know what person-centered care is, it's a basically taking your patient's wants, needs, and values into account and including them as, as basically a participant inside of the treatment recommendation and all of that. So when you're going through the consulting process, I used to view it from a perspective of, I'm just gonna tell the patient what they should do and obviously logically they should just do whatever I tell them based on the X's and O's on their audiogram from a treatment standpoint. Shocker, it didn't resonate well with my patients and a lot of them ended up going without hearing treatment because I didn't know how to relate to them. I didn't know what was important to them because honestly I probably didn't even care what was important to them. This training that was put on by Audigy helped me view it from the lens of it's not about me, it's about the patient and it's about what the patient wants and it's about their emotional reaction to their hearing loss and, and how you need to communicate with them to help them understand the ramifications of not treating their hearing loss as well as the positives for treating their hearing loss. And once I went through that training, it totally changed how I had discussions with patients. And honestly, I probably am not where I'm at today if it wasn't for that training that Audigy put on. I cannot speak highly enough of the training that they had with that. Now, I was working with an Audigy clinic. Now, when I went and started my own clinic, I did not become an Audigy clinic. I am not an Audigy member myself. But when I was considering what type of organization I'd even be willing to partner with, I had probably a couple years worth of discussions with the leadership of Audigy to determine like, is this an organization that I would be able to feel comfortable in partnering with on a project? And when it really came down to it, between the leadership of Audigy and the members in Audigy, I felt like that organization was willing to uphold itself to a higher standard, just like I hold my membership base to a higher standard with the Hearing Up Network. And because of that, I felt like we could accelerate the adoption of best practices. Uh, and to be honest, there's there's already a lot of Audigy members who are following best practices. There's a number of Audigy members who are already in the Hearing Up network that have already gone through the vetting process that are already committed to pro providing best practices. And then there's a number of them who are like a little bit off. I mean, and we're talking a lot of locations here and a lot of audiology or audiologists and hearing instrument specialists who are already providing a high quality of care. They just need to add a, a few different services to make sure that they're following comprehensive best practices. And on top of that, they're the only organization that really holds their members to, or even offers any kind of training to make sure that they're doing things in a better way by their patients. And um, there, there might be some others out there, but n not as robust and not as committed, in my opinion, is what Audigy is with their membership base. So I felt like this was a great way to increase the quality of care and increase the amount of providers that I could say, hey, you should feel comfortable going to this, this member because they're providing best practices. And that's good for individuals with hearing loss as a whole. So what I would say is this, if you have some, for, for some reason, some negative perception of what Audigy is, I guess let me know what that is in the comment section or direct message me and let me know. Uh, why you have some 
reservations about me working with Audigy because I see this as a great way to increase the quality of care for patients. All right, going on to the third question. This one comes from Cynthia, and I cannot pronounce this person's last name. I apologize for that. How much money do you make with your referrals? Fantastic question. Now, when I first started the Hearing Up Network back in 2019, I specifically designed it that I was not compensated based on any type of referrals. Whether you join the network uh, with a membership fee and you make, uh, I don't know, 10,000 referrals or you get zero referrals, I'm not compensated based on referrals. I did this for one reason as a, from a legal standpoint, I just didn't feel comfortable. I felt like there, it could be kind of viewed as some kind of violation of like a, a kickback or antitrust, not maybe not antitrust, but Stark law, things like that. I don't know. And so I just felt like it was more ethical for me to say, hey, listen, I'm going to be creating content the same way I create content right now. I'm going to be promoting best practices. If that leads to you getting individuals who want to go to a provider who follow best practices, great. If not, I apologize. That's horrible. But I did not feel comfortable making it a pay per person thing because I feel like that could potentially change the message of what I'm trying to share. When we had initial negotiations with Audigy, about how I would be compensated for the time that I'm putting into this joint venture, the discussion of potentially paying me based on referral came up and I immediately was like, that doesn't motivate me at all. I don't feel comfortable with that. If I'm gonna get anything, I would, I would essentially get compensated based on how many people are willing and committed to uphold the high standard of following comprehensive best practices. And outside of that, I just didn't, I don't wanna deal with this idea that I have to drive patients to a clinic and receive compensation. I feel like that potentially could skew the motivations for what we're trying to do here. So my goal is the same with the hearingloss.com joint venture as it is with my hearingup.com uh, provider network, which is you pay a flat fee as a member. The only way that you can be considered certified is to make sure that you're meeting these standards, uh, which is the best practice standards. And anything outside of that is is what it is. So, you know, I realize that I'm probably capping the potential for making money on this by doing it based on membership because there's only so many members, there's only so many fees that could be paid for it. And then once you hit that cap, then Cliff makes no more money. Um, so it's probably not a good financial decision on my part to not get paid by, by referral. But I just, again, I just didn't feel comfortable with it. And, you know, I make enough money in my career from the influencing side as well as the, um, the clinic side that I'm comfortable. Um, I'm happy with my career. And, you know, making a ton of more money wouldn't necessarily make me any happier than what I am right now. So I just didn't feel motivated by getting paid per referral. All right, on to the fourth and final comment slash question. This one's my personal favorite from last week. So hopefully you stuck around to hear this one. This one comes from Robert Lance 2362 Dr. Cliff, by not enforcing your own high standards, by mandating it and leaving it to consumers to carry out the load, you have sold out. Epic fail. Enjoy the increased exposure and or money you will get from this merger. As far as enforcing, so there is some level of enforcement with this. Um, I can appreciate the sentiment of this question because I understand where it's coming from. There is some level of enforcement here. So initially you can't even get into either my hearing up network or the hearingloss.com, you know, dual certification that we're going to have that you, in order to get that dual certification, you have to meet Audigy's standards for patient best practices, as well as my standard for clinical best practices from an audiologic perspective. Now, you have to meet that standard. You have to go through the entire process, the same process that we set up with hearingup.com. So hearingup.com, once you get into hearingup.com, the person doing the continuous vetting is you, the consumer. And the reason that it works that way is because I cannot physically be standing inside of every clinic at any given moment. I have to rely on educating you guys to uphold, to hold them to a high standard, meaning giving you access to the same checklists that have all the best practices on there. You can take them into the clinic and make sure that they're doing all of those things. Now, inherently, I believe that those members are doing those things. Now, are there a few things that are missed here and there? Always, like there is some level of error always in everything. And the thing is though, is that I don't believe it's intentional with a hearing up member, and I don't think it'll be intentional with a hearingloss.com dual certified member as well. And this is the only way that it works. It is the only 
way that we can ensure that members continuously uphold this high standard because they know that the people who come in who want best practices have been educated on what those best practices are and why they're so important and they're going to hold the provider's feet to the fire on this now we get complaints, not very many, but we get complaints every once in a while when a consumer feels like they went into a member and said, hey, I don't think that I got best practices done here because they didn't do X, Y, and Z. And then after a discussion with the, the patient and a discussion with the clinician, we're able to determine where the miscommunication was. And oftentimes it is a miscommunication. And so I just think that the most effective form of vetting is to educate you to make sure that you continuously have some kind of influence on the quality of care that you get from a particular clinician. With that said, if you feel like there's a better way, so Robert, if you feel like there's a better way for me to hold a higher standard, not just for myself and my clinic, but for the rest of our industry, please let me know what that is and let me know what I would have to do to not be considered a sellout for doing that. As far as the money and exposure, yes, I will probably get some more exposure. To be honest with you, I'm not sure how much more exposure. I'm already the most viewed influencer inside of this, this industry. And to be quite honest with you, when you look at, and I didn't even know this, um, when, when Audigy was trying to determine whether or not I was worthy enough to partner with on this, they went and did a study to figure out like, it does, Dr. Cliff Olson actually had the influence that we think that he has. And when they started actually, they hired someone to look at all of the content that was being being created. And by far, I've created the most, most content, and this includes uh, of anybody in the entire world inside of the audiology space. And, you know, so will it increase my exposure? I mean, probably not. It'll, my influence will probably increase the exposure of hearingloss.com, which is the whole point. Will it make me more money? Well, I would say that yes, it'll make me more money, but, and I may have talked about this earlier, so I apologize if I did, but my ability to make money has to do with how much time that I have, not the things that I choose to partner with. And let me explain that. I could take these 10 hours a week that I work with developing hearingloss.com, and I could take that 10 hours and do something else that makes money. And I would bet that I could take my 10 hours and do other things that make me way more money than I will, what I will make from hearingloss.com. The reason I wanted to do hearingloss.com is because I felt like bringing attention to best practices and having a huge organization of individuals who are also on board with upping the game like I'm trying to do myself, I felt like that is in better service of individuals with hearing loss. Sue me if you think that that is not the truth or if that is not the case. But I have, with the, all the influence that I have inside of this industry, I can pretty much do whatever I want. And I do realize that that comes across as an arrogant statement. But I have options. I have options that can make, you wouldn't believe the amount of offers that I turn down for different like sponsored products that are willing to give me tens of thousands of dollars to make a single video for their particular product, but I don't do it because I do not feel like it's in the best interest of the viewers of my channel. And so I could easily sell out way, 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 way easier than doing this joint venture with hearing loss dot, with Audigy for hearingloss.com. So honestly, I don't know. Hopefully this video helped clarify some of your concerns from last week. I do realize that I rambled quite a bit on this video, I apologize for that like I always do. Maybe I apologize too much. Maybe I should just stop apologizing and just say it like it is and offend people because apparently I do that anyway. But nonetheless, again, if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and as always, I'll see you next week.